Welcome! Let's talk about the most ubiquitous current sensor, the shunt resistor. By the end of this video, you will know how to take measurements with the best accuracy. The shunt is a resistive device capable of current sensing. Following Ohm's law, a voltage drop proportional to the current is generated across the resistor of known value. The current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance value. The sensitivity of the shunt is how much voltage is generated per unit of current, microvolts or millivolts per amp. A higher sensitivity requires a higher resistance value, but this comes with a larger voltage drop and more heat dissipated by the shunt. The maximum differential input voltage on the sense pins is specified in the datasheet as plus minus 0.1 volts. This is the maximum voltage drop allowed. The shunt is placed in series with the electrical load, therefore the value of the shunt must be kept small in order to minimize the voltage drop, but high enough for better sensitivity. As with most things in life, a compromise is necessary. The power dissipated by the shunt is the voltage times the current. The heat cannot be allowed to build up in the resistor. It must be dissipated, or the temperature increase may alter or even destroy the shunt. The heat dissipation can be achieved with a heat sink or by using a large copper area on the PCB with groupings of through-hole vias. An important characteristic of the shunt is having very low temperature coefficient of resistance. For instance, the temperature coefficient of resistance of copper is around 3900 parts per million per degree centigrade, while a shunt can have better than 50 parts per million per degree centigrade. It is good practice to minimize the length and maximize the width of the copper trace between the output of the current source to the shunt as well as from the shunt to the load. Doing so will minimize the errors introduced into the circuit by way of the circuit layout. The four-terminal resistor can have 10 times better tolerance than the two-terminal resistor, 0.1% versus 1%. The cost of the four-terminal shunt is higher, but there are other benefits, as you will see shortly. This is the system diagram presented in the datasheet. Low side and high side sensing refers to the placement of the shunt. When the shunt is placed between the load and the ground, it is called low side sensing. If the shunt is placed between the positive supply and the load, then it's high side sensing. The main disadvantage of the low side sensing is the inability to detect faults, such as a disconnected load or a short circuit to ground on the other side of the load. The high side sensing can detect faults, and it is the recommended configuration. Make sure that the unused sense pins are connected to ground. This is the equivalent circuit of a two-terminal shunt, ignoring the series inductance and parallel capacitance. Our shunt is the ideal internal shunt resistance, while the others are the real resistances of the pads and solder joints. The solder joints resistance is an unknown variable that is dependent on solder paste quantity, composition, type, and pad bonding properties. Cold solder joints are prone to errors when no thermal relief is present, which is the case for shunts in order to minimize added resistance. It is recommended to use as much solder as possible to minimize this issue. Let's see what happens when we connect the shunt as shown. The sense pins are connected to the shunt at the outer bottom edge of the shunt terminal or farther away in the circuit. The resistance seen by the sense pins is in fact the sum of all resistances shown plus the resistance of the copper traces, if there are any in series with the circuit. If the shunt value is very small, these other resistances can be higher than the resistance of the shunt itself, greatly affecting the accuracy of the measurements. In addition to that, the temperature coefficient of the pads, copper traces and solder joints are much worse than that of the shunt, so the temperature dependency of the resistance of the circuit is very high. In summary, the error sources are the pads resistance, solder joints resistance and temperature. There is, however, a way to improve the accuracy. This is called Kelvin connection and it taps into the inner bottom edge of a shunt terminal. The solder joints resistance error is eliminated. However, the pads resistance is still there because the shunt material is extending under the pad area of the component. So the actual resistance of the physical component is defined on the extremities of the pads. It is also highly susceptible to assembly position errors as the component will float unevenly on the solder pads. In summary, the error sources are the pads resistance and temperature, a big improvement from before, but there is room for more. The PCB layout is extremely important when working with low value resistors. 
This layout design offers the best performance for a two-terminal shunt and is therefore recommended by Microchip. Let's see the four-terminal shunt. The two additional terminals are connected directly to the shunt and separated from the high current path of the other two terminals. The additional pads and the solder joint's resistance is the same as before, but the current that passes through them is negligible because the sense pin's input current is less than plus minus 7 microamps, as shown in the datasheet. The only error source that remains is the temperature. That's why it's important to choose a shunt with a very low temperature coefficient of resistance and a power rating large enough to keep the temperature of the shunt low, even at high currents. Another important recommendation is to preserve the differential routing from the shunt to the sense pins. This improves the signal-to-noise ratio, reduces EMI, and makes the signal more immune to ground currents or differences. Thank you for watching. For more information, please go to www.microchip.com. Click on the search glass in the top right corner of the homepage. Enter the part number of the device of interest and select the device product page where all collateral including the device data sheet and any demo and evaluation boards available for the device will be provided. Thank you.